What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be looking at part two of Know Your Ally Britain. So if you haven't seen the first one, go watch that first. Absolutely. <laughs> um, that way you'll have yeah. all the context surrounding what we're talking about today or checking out today. Before we get started guys, we want to share with you what we found out about this film because we were still not quite sure exactly what why, the purpose was. Yeah, what the purpose was for creating it. Just printed this out guys so we'd have it. Um, the film Know Your Ally Britain was produced during World War II as a part of a series of propaganda films by the United States government. Its primary purpose was to strengthen the bond between the Amer American public and their British allies by educating Americans about the British people, their culture, and their contributions to the war effort. So that is kind of what I was, uh, you know, guessing this was about as we got into this okay. film. It kind of made sense. That's, that, okay. that's what it's about. But, you know, at first I wasn't quite sure if that was what was going on. At the time, the U.S. and U.K. were key partners in the fight against the Axis powers, and the film aimed to dispel any misconceptions or prejudices Americans might have had about the British by highlighting Britain's resilience under Germans' attack and emphasizing shared democratic values, know your ally Britain, sought to foster mutual respect and solidarity between the two nations. Um, and this film was part of a broader effort to build morale and ensure strong cooperation between the allies. So supposedly there are other, other versions of this, I guess, mm -hmm. that may be... Um, not like just other Britain. Installments. Right. I, I'm not really sure what those are if they exist, but it sounds like there are other ones. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, guys, so that's basically what this film is about, which I'm sure a lot of you already knew that, but we just wanted to know. We were a little confused. So we yeah, we want to know 100% sure what was going on here, why this was created, but totally makes sense. So, guys, we are going to go ahead and jump back in here. You ready yeah. to get started? Let's do it. All right. Set talk part two of Know Your Ally Britain. But this gentleman never bothered about the truth. And when John Britton started carrying the war to Germany, he tried a new line. The warmonger Churchill only wages this war against the German people to save the British Empire. All right, let's take a look at that one. Here's the British Empire. And here's where the Germans were headed when Britain declared war. Does that look like trying to save the Empire? tackling Germany when it was headed into Poland and toward Russia, the one direction in which there were no British possessions. Mm. After Poland fell, Hitler hinted at peace with the British. This was the perfect chance to save the empire. But it wasn't saving the empire that the British were thinking about. The position of His Majesty's government in respect of any peace offer by Hitler. We are not, in any circumstances, prepared to negotiate with him at any time on any subject. The freedom we fought for in 1776, Britain has since freely given to Canada, Australia, Australia New Zealand, New Zealand, South Africa. These are independent nations with their own parliaments, their own laws, even their own money systems, their own tariffs, which often work to Britain's disadvantage, their own armies and navies. Britain couldn't even take them into war if she wanted to. True. Um, you know, that reminds me of something I want to check out soon. I want to check out exactly what it means to be a commonwealth mm. nation like yeah, exactly kind of about that before. yeah i know and that just reminded me of it like we need to remember that because yeah. that would be very interesting to see exactly um you know is it just symbolic or is there more to it because yeah. that's something i've never looked into <clears throat> that's a problem they settle for themselves each one of the British Commonwealth of Nations declared war on Germany of its own free will. Democracy stands on guard. If it wasn't for the British at Gibraltar, Malta, Cyprus, Suez, Alexandria, and they're hanging on to them regardless of the cost, and their drive across Libya to Tripoli, there would have been no American landing in North Africa. Their 
there's another tune the Nazis play about the British Empire. The British are sitting back, letting others fight the war for them. Ooh, we know that tune very That's well. That's definitely not true. Oh. Britain will fight to the last Australian or Canadian or New Zealander. The planes flying with the RAF in Britain, two out of three are manned by crews from the island. And of the planes on the overseas fronts, the western desert in Africa and the west, four out of five are manned by boys from Britain. And then there's a little thing called the British Navy. From 1588, when it licked the Spanish Armada, to 1940, when we got moving on a two-ocean navy, the greatest battle fleet in the world, that too is manned almost entirely by men of Britain, the little island in the Atlantic, an island of seafarers. And the British Merchant Navy, still the greatest merchant navy in the world, in spite of all that Hitler can do. Men from every British town and village in the stokeholds of 10,000 ships, on ice-coated decks, oh in grimy engine rooms, men who have been torpedoed twice. Oh, the worst nightmare. Yeah. There's one English sailor who's been torpedoed six times and still signed on again. Oh my god! We what? We hear about these things because of a curious character whose ways will never be completely understandable to an American. John Britton himself. He has an idea he shouldn't talk about himself and what he does. He calls it bad form. We call it <laughs> damn silly. He'd say of a Spitfire, Oh, she's not bad, little kite. But this man, the boss of the German Air Force, can tell us that the Spitfire has been the most deadly fighter in the world. For a moment, imagine that you're not American, but British. You'd still be in uniform, for in Britain, every man between the age of 18 and 41, unless he cannot be replaced at a vital workbench, is already in uniform. Your own wow. man, too. He's had to quit gassing about the last war, so they're now starting to draft men up to 51. Wow. Up to... 51. Did they stay up to 51? They were doing the draft up to 51? Hmm. Dependents or no dependents. If you've got yourself into this mess, your draft board will say, frightfully sorry, old chap, but you're in the army anyway. And your kid sister, if she isn't a sailor, or in the Air Force, or the land army, or a ferry pilot. In the land army? Or in the fire brigade. She's probably in the army. For they've drafted unmarried women up to 30. Oh. Wow. And even if she's married, every woman up to 41 can be drafted to work in war plants. And it's a real draft. For eight million workers, men and women, can't quit their jobs or be fired without government permission. Britain is only 20 miles from German guns and German planes. Everybody, man or woman, young or old, is in the front line. Wow. If your unit gets sent there, you probably won't be invited out for supper or for a drink. That's not because the British don't want to entertain you. They haven't anything to entertain you with. Britain is mobilized for war, total war, and that means an end to civilian supplies. If you were a Britisher, you wouldn't expect your girl to use lipstick. There isn't any, except what we bring over as bait. She wouldn't be smartly dressed, for clothes are rationed, severely rationed. It's very unlikely she wears stockings, for if she bought a pair of stockings a month, that would be all the clothes of any kind she could buy. Wow. That's some rationing. We think our gas rationing is tough, but John Britton gets no gas at all. He no. goes to a pub to buy a bottle of whiskey. The pub keeper laughs in his face. Grain is needed for industrial alcohol. Industrial alcohol is needed for munitions. And nearly all the reserve stock of British whiskey is kept for sale to America to pay for the goods Britain buys here. For don't forget, besides Lend-Lease, Britain buys and pays for vast quantities of goods. 
And it was the cash purchases that Britain made before we entered the war that gave our munitions industry its start and enabled us to build it up in record time. He goes to buy a pack of cigarettes. There probably aren't any. Wow, there man. Are, Two shillings, please. That's 40 cents for a pack of cigarettes. 12 cents represent the cost of the cigarettes. The other 28, the tax paid to the government. For wow. I wonder what that would be for inflation. Yeah, I was just wondering that. Like, I have like, no obviously, idea. Obviously, now it's hard to wrap your head around how that could be expensive because yeah. it seems so cheap. But but and my thing was the taxes on that. <laughs> Twelve cent for the cigarettes. Forty was it forty 20, total? Yeah, so to twenty eight cents for. So well over double for the for the taxes. <sighs> wow, man, I can't even begin to imagine what it was like living in this period of time here. Like this is just. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. I just. What? That's a little light interlude. Do you see the headline? Prison for eloping with sister-in-law. <laughs> Apparently it was a crime back in the day. Huh, okay. <laughs> British spend $49 million per day on war. Mm. Wow. I mean, I'm just thinking like back then, that would have been, wow. For Britain is going all out in taxation. Nobody is making any money out of this war. Industry is paying. Excess profits tax is 100%. Wow. Labor is paying. The man who earns $33 a week pays 29% income tax. And the rich man, if there are any of them left, pays an income tax of no less than 97.5%. Holy! What? 97.5%? Obviously, that's over a certain amount. Like what? I would be so curious, guys. If any of you happens to know, you know, from this time period, that ninety-seven and a half percent income tax. What kind of income compared? You know, if you convert it to today's yeah. money, uh, what would that look like? Because that that just that, obviously very high. I understand the reasons for it, but mm -hmm. it's just like ninety-seven and a half percent. That leaves two and a half percent. Wow. And then there's the little matter of food. There are not many fat men in England nowadays, mm. but John Britton isn't kicking. He knows one egg a week is helping him to win the war. The British rations are the rations of a free people. They could get food as they did in peacetime from Canada, Australia, but that would take ships. And the British prefer to use the ships for supplies to Russia, planes from America, Troops to the Mediterranean. A lot of sacrifice. To win yeah. the war, yes. every Britisher is Happily. on short rations. And has been on short rations for two years. Everybody except the children. Oh, well, that's good. They get four times the eggs that grown-ups do. They get all the oranges that arrive in Britain. And practically all of the extra milk. For John Britain is thinking of after the war. Of the new world that his children and ours will inherit. A world where there will not only be freedom of speech and freedom of worship, but also freedom from want and freedom from fear. It is not given to us to peer into the mysteries of the future. Still I avow my hope and faith, sure and inviolate, that in the days to come, the British and American peoples will for their own safety and for the good of all walk together in majesty, in justice, and in peace. This is what the British are fighting for. They are an old people, a stubborn people, and sometimes they have moved slowly. But in three years of blood and sweat and tears, John Britton has found his soul. <laughs> he is tough, now he is determined, and now he knows where he is marching, to victory and to a new world. He's a good man to have on our team. Wow. That ending no, got me. 
I didn't <laughs> like say anything without crying. That ending got me, and I, I started getting teared up. Uh, uh, especially the kids. Yeah. That's that's what started getting me. And I, that that was so beautiful to know that, like, through it all, the, all the adults were sacrificing everything for the future. We're sacrificing everything for their their kids and for future generations. And Gosh. that that's beautiful. What can you say? I mean, what heart, you know? Yeah. And. I think my biggest takeaway from this... Gosh, I made it the whole way through. <laughs> no, me too. Me too. I'm like, I'm not uh, like... Yeah. Um, I think my biggest takeaway from watching this was just the respect I have for you all as a people who had such resilience and bravery yeah. and just fortitude to get through something like that and with a smile on your faces in a lot of cases that is just so beautiful that like all the oranges all the milk uh uh four times the eggs and just yeah. and just like making sure that the kids didn't feel it as right. much with the, all the struggle and every the horrible uh things that were going on and nutrition was prioritized and it was, i felt i felt like it was more than that though it was right. it was like we're going to make sure the kids don't take this on as much as we're having mm -hmm. to and, you know making sure the kids bearing can... them a lot of the burden yeah of, and, and worry i think and and it's it's almost like that's obviously what we would do as parents mm -hmm. but it's almost like the entire country took that on as uh we're we're a collective parent and i think the that generation. says a lot as to who you as a british people are that that's your priority and that's beautiful yeah it's very that. beautiful and i yeah, that that is something that I just uh that's just amazing. I, I don't even know how to put that into words on Yeah. One. And I definitely don't take for granted how easy we have it nowadays, mm -hmm. you know. Just compared to Yeah, back just then. compared to in general. Like, you yeah. know, but especially at a wartime like that. It's just right. We, unfathomable. You know, there's 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 struggles in every generation, but you know, I'm so thankful that we we haven't had to face something like that. You know, there's, you know, you, the finance, financial stuff goes up and down and job market and all that. But we've never had to experience rationing in modern society in in, in most Western nations, you know. No, not, and, not like that for sure. And I, I what think, a blessing. I think the closest we've ever gotten to a taste of what that would be like is during covid when a lot of things you couldn't get and yeah, a lot but, of things are out of stock, but it's not. But I mean, that's, that's not that's like a, that's like a this I much. I know, but compared, I'm just saying yeah, like, that just close. goes to show how convenient life has been for us. Life is very convenient yeah. now, and you know sometimes it takes looking at something like this to say, "Hey, remember how blessed you are," and that's something I take away from this. I'm always thinking about how blessed I am, yeah, but something yeah. like this just reminds you of it even more. Like, wow. On a deeper level. Right. This was definitely an amazing film, guys. I'm so happy we watched this. Let us know in the comments if you were old enough to actually remember living through this. That, that would mean someone had to be probably at least mid-80s. We're probably talking at least mid-80s, probably late 80s, 90. That would be really the people who would have really remembered this time period yeah. fully. So and share your stories. Absolutely. Your, just whatever you want to put out there. Your wisdom. Love to read it. Yeah. Yes, because you guys Important. obviously have some wisdom to share with uh, the younger generations. And uh, it's not every day that we get to hear that. And open it up to talk about. So, yeah. Yeah. But uh, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to drop your comments or suggestions about this video or others. And don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow us on our journey to discover anything about the UK and Ireland. Till next time, guys. Peace. Bye.